All right, so Jamar, we have the toolbox detail for you. I've got my degreaser and my air pump, and I've got the no-nonsense um, invisible cleaner. And the reason we're using this with this is because degreaser will leave a film typically. So we're going to clean off the film we do leave with this, but we want this because it can cut better than this can. So it's got almost like two treatment in it, basically. Got a whole bunch of throwaway microfiber towels, but I'll use it on mine though I got that wrinkle finish coating on my toolbox. I don't know if it's actually called it, I call it wrinkle finish. And I'll just spray this thing down. Don't be afraid to use too much. Now you probably should obviously grease your rollers and all that when you're done. Probably goes without being said. And then you can either let it sit there for a second or me, I already kind of wiped mine down a little bit. Go through and agitate it with a, because I have a textured paint, I'm going to agitate mine to get into the pores. All right. All right, now we're just drying off the degreaser. I went through and did the whole toolbox. Um, don't use that brush if you got smooth paint. You also scratch it up, obviously. You just use a rag to wipe the degreaser everywhere. But I'm going through kind of drying it up. And I'll get back with you when I'm finished drying. All right, so now I'm going to use compressed air to blow out all the cracks and crevices that it might still be hiding in the, the rest of the degreaser. Nonsense cleaner. I'll spray. Now I'll saturate the towel. Not for it's dripping wet, obviously, but just enough to get it wet. And I will go through. Now this is pretty sudsy, so it's gonna leave that white, but it'll dry at some point. But especially if you got smooth metal, you're gonna want to do this. Now it's gonna probably streak on your smooth metal when it dries. So you might have to actually follow up with a dry towel because this will still dry, but like I said, it'll dry leaving streaks. Um, before you lock that in with a ceramic, you don't want a ceramic over those streaks. So I'm just gonna get around everywhere I can. I'm not gonna spray this this time, just because I don't need to. And then I'm gonna retell now it's not quite as wet as it was, so I'm gonna reapply it. And I'm just refolding my towel because it basically came undone on me, but you'll just so if I have to do that a couple times as your towel absorbs it, absorbs it, you'll need to just touch it up a little bit, kind of keep it wet. All right, so I'm filming by myself, so you'll have to forgive me. I just lost my camera, man. Okay. So we have the two-year ceramic spray that you wanted to use. This is what I'll be using as well. This is my special flashlight. It's just a black light. And that is to find the traces. This has got tracers inside of it so you can tell where you've applied it. Now, if you look at this, I can see a whole lot of black sediment on the bottom of this thing. So you're gonna wanna shake this up really well. So the rest will be kind of clearish. And they'll be black at the bottom. So this has got the graphene, which is that black stuff. It doesn't mix correctly, so it settles. So I just shake it up a little bit. <clears throat> Nothing crazy. Turn it on. This is my foam applicator. This is not what I typically do for a vehicle, but because this is a toolbox, it'll be fine. I'll find a clean side and not with anything that's got dirt embedded into it. And I'll press my trigger. And I'll put about three lines typically. Kind of mostly wet because this is this is porous so i had to put it on thicker than normal 
So now if I go behind the camera here and I show you the blue light on this or black light, you see those three spots are darker so I can tell where the ceramic's been applied. Now I'll apply it on my toolbox and you really want to make sure you get this stuff on there, especially if it's thick like mine, like porous. <clears throat> Don't be afraid to use too much. I mean, you, you can definitely use too much, but that can actually ruin it, the coating. But I will. You want to put it on overlapping patterns. So I'll go one way and go back the other way. That way you don't miss a spot. And this stuff smells kind of iffy, but <clears throat> I'm supposed to wear a mask and all that crap, but I don't. Turn on my flashlight. It's going to be hard to tell. There'll be a darker blue when I get on there. And then you see those spots there. Those spots are a lot of times where the coating has been applied thicker. It even looks like three fingerprints. It's actually just where the coating, where it could have dripped off or ran or whatever. So I can see right on the edges of this that there's some coating there. So it's a little bit harder to see with this thing being textured probably, but that's what it is. So after I've just applied it like that, I will let my coating sit up, set up for, for anywhere from one to two minutes, depending on humidity. Now, sometimes it can be actually sooner than that, which it's actually not terribly out terribly humid out, so I just gotta use my lights to see the rainbow effect. And I'll just look, especially if you can get a reflection on your toolbox, which I cannot, you'll look for it to reflect. And it'll turn rainbow, a very light rainbow. And I can actually see it off of these handles and I, better than I can here. So I'll watch it down here to tell me when this is done. And it's not ready yet, so I'm going to Continue to do the rest of my toolbox. They say you want to do obviously a panel at a time if you're doing like a vehicle or whatever, but for the most part, for what I'm doing, this if you did it wrong, you're probably not going to see it, at least with my toolbox. I don't know about yours, if yours is all textured or not. I'm just going to apply it to this whole upper section and I'll probably wipe it off. I'll probably be about good time. Even if it's been less than two minutes, I'll probably be enough. And then I'll follow what I did first because you're going to want to start up here where I first applied it because I'll be the one that's curing the, the fastest, obviously, first. So I just got to remember where I stopped at so I can start from there. So I'll call that good. I'm going to wipe that off. Use a good towel. Um, if you have to use a flashlight on your phone or anything to check and see if it's rainbowing or not. I wish I could show you that on camera better, but I can hardly see it myself, so I don't know if my camera could pick it up. Sometimes it helps if you have a reflection, like these I can see some reflection in, to look at that thing you're looking at, and if it looks distorted, usually that's kind of its sign showing it's ready to go. And it'll be distorted already, just cause it's wet, but you can usually see a color distortion. That's the rainbow effect. You go through and just wipe it off, your toolbox should, after it's dried out, will go back to its normal color with a hint of a, a better shine to it, I guess. Like, it will definitely shine better, that's for sure. Um, and I just make sure I get it off, because if this thing hardens and you miss a spot, if you, especially if you have a smooth toolbox paint job, you'll definitely see it. It'll be a, what they call a high spot, and it'll probably be white or clear. It'll, it'll look different. It'll be, you'll notice it, for sure. So if you notice it, your towel is getting because this stuff is like oily, so the more you use it, the more you wipe, um, the more your toolbox, or the, as you're wiping off your toolbox, the more oily ceramic you're getting into your towel, it'll actually start smearing off your towel all over your toolbox where you just finished wiping it. So you have to keep an eye on your towel being loaded up is what I call it. So like on these shiny pieces, I'm making sure that when I wipe them, there's no streaks left, because if I leave those streaks, they'll harden like that. It'll dry out like that, and then you'll be stuck with it. Then if you have any black plastic trim, if anything's plastic, you can actually coat it. If it's black, of course, um, you can coat it and just forget it. You don't have to wipe it off because it'll actually soak into the black and keep it from getting oxidized by the sun. But that right there is how you do your toolbox. I'm gonna go through and finish mine. And then I definitely recommend going around with a flashlight, especially if you've got smooth paint, and just checking, making sure you don't leave a smear mark anywhere. 
So that's how you ceramic coat your toolbox. If you have any questions, give me a call. So another thing I forgot to mention is after you coat your toolbox to let it sit out of the weather, out of keeping it out of rain or getting wet from oils or anything else for about four hours. That'll, that's how long it takes for the ceramic to cure, to set up, I guess. It'll cure after 24 hours. So you're gonna really wanna make sure you keep it clean and away from oil and whatever else. If somebody's like washing it or semi or whatever, so they're not blasting that water near you. And then touching it yourself, I'd definitely wait after four hours, you should wait till 24. Like do it on the weekend and you're gonna come home or something like that. Do it, and then you can just leave it there and forget about it. And then when you come back in, it'll be hard and you don't have to worry about your fingerprints because the oils in your fingers will penetrate that ceramic while it's still setting up and it will harden your fingerprint to that toolbox typically. So then you can't get that up because that stuff will, that semi-permanent ceramic is not the best stuff that's up there. So you want to really be careful after that. So I'm going to leave my toolbox like this till tomorrow, about this time, and then I will be able to push it back where it goes. So that's all I had.